I'm Andrea Malloy from uh, Athens, Georgia, Daily Groceries Co-op, and uh, kind of inspired by the, it was great that, that a startup uh, related speech just came before mine because part of what I did when I came in was say we're, we're like a startup but we're not. What do we do? What are our resources? And uh, I'll, I'll kind of follow her lead to, to say what I wasn't really going to say but very quickly, uh, that the story of self for me was that I had worked with nonprofits, primarily environmental advocacy, and had gotten very involved with food and farms and worked from the farmer's end of things and was interested in the distribution side of things and, and why were things not happening on that end. And in looking to move to Athens, um, I, I discovered cooperatives. I was not from a cooperative background. And my self story speaks very much to what I want to primarily talk to you about today, which is how important what you're doing today is to the principle of participation. Being here and participating in this conversation played a huge role in our co-ops now and, and in our future. And it did even when I looked at taking the job because I started researching cooperatives and read about NCGA and joined on the listserv for Cooperative Grocers Information Network at the time, and it blew my mind. Um, and it told me things that I would never have known as a casual shopper. Uh, I just hadn't been exposed to co-ops. So anyway, uh, this, was, this is not our earliest location. We moved out of our earliest location within just a few years, but that was one of our earliest iterations. That is our size. We are 1,400 square feet altogether, which is 1,100 square feet of retail space, and we fit the offices and the back room and the deli prep and our only bathroom into the other 350 square feet. Um, so life is a challenge. <laughs> and we have been this way for over 20 years. And somewhere along the way, there was a lot of interest on the part of the board to grow, to grow bigger. Um, and uh, it had been a one step forward, one step back constantly in, in the co-op's history. Um, this, I don't know if you can read any of this. This is who we were as well. We were completely, uh, all of our cashiers even were uh, owner mem were members, working members. Uh, they got a 20% discount. It's a ton of people and everything, almost everything, part-time management for about 20 years. And uh, this, is, this is an interesting thing to speak to some of what we've been talking about in terms of culture. This was our persuasion rather than uh, invitation. Um, we did a lot of this in our newsletters and in our culture. Um, this is the high cost of credit. Don't use your credit card at our store. It costs us money. Um, and uh, this is all of our needs, the, the, the current needs we had at the co-op. Um, this is this, is, was, this was the bulk of our messaging um, when I read a lot of our past newsletters. And it, it was who we were. It was a lot of, a lot of preaching. Um, and uh, we knew we didn't want to be that forever. And, but we didn't know how to get out of that. We were very alone. We didn't know any other co-ops. And until uh, when I came on, I looked to those resources. And then we met you. <laughs> uh, I somehow caught wind of this. and called up Mark, I think, and uh, he let me vent a lot <laughs> after working for two months and invited me to CBLD 101 and graciously let us come complimentary for our first visit. And because it was in Nashville, every single one of my board members except one agreed to come. And uh, it was an incredible experience. Uh, it, it, it turned the page for us. We learned there were other co-ops. We learned that other people had been where we were. And it gave us the kind of hope and alignment that had never been in our co-op history. So if any of you are, can, this, was, this was everyone's favorite exercise. I'm so glad someone took a picture of this. That this, this, was, this was a game changer. It seems silly when you're doing it, but it's, it's made such a difference to our board. Um, and uh, the, I wanted to make sure, I, I wanted to talk about, uh, I wanted to draw to some of the, the uh, literature in the ICA Blueprint for Progress. I really like the, the writings in there, if you have a chance to read it on participation. Their, inter their participation application to the, the co-op principle of autonomy is, I help others so they can help themselves. And they help me in the same way so that we are more in control of our future. And that is very much the case with daily. Um, it has been people in situations like this, but not just this, I was constantly sent to another general manager and another general manager and another general manager that spent hours on the phone with me. Um, and that was, that was huge. I don't know any other business that's quite like that, where people are completely stressed and overworked and uh, you know, still, even in their larger situations, but will just stop everything they're doing and talk to you 
uh, pretty regularly. Through, through this, uh, I was connected with Jackie Arthur, and I'm so sad that she's not here today, because it would have been great to be presenting alongside her. Her co-op was, was very much, or y'all's co-op, was very much the same size that ours was, a little about twice the size, probably. But, um, uh, and she gave me a lot of inspiration and strength, and I talk bi-weekly to, all the way up in Kalamazoo, Chris Dilley, uh, and I was, I was directed to him by CDS because he was smaller than us and had moved. And I think I approached CDS with the frame uh, of, I need to talk to other small co-ops because no one understands our problems. And I, I believe it was Mark that said, no, you need to talk to people that were small. Um, and got past that, and it is absolutely true. Being able to see through all the other co-ops how people have gotten to the other side has been tremendous. And uh, Jackie and Chris are two of those people, and New Leaf we met also through, Jackie invited us to an NCGA meeting where we met other people in our region, and we were going to buy our first point of sale system. I don't know if there's anybody out there that has experience with the old, not really POS system. <laughs> and we went to New Leaf Market, and their staff gave us a full day of their time to tell us everything they knew about how their point of sale system was working because uh, they had been using it for years and we, we needed to see it in action and that was a really it was my staff that kind of came down with it, that came down with me to see all of that and that was that was really impressive we really got a lot of time from other people and the going back to the ICA quote about how we in turn help make the bigger world of co-ops stronger is, you know, there are not a lot of co-ops in Georgia. Um, and if we can show what it, what it is to be a co-op in our area, and this kind of goes to the participation or serving of our owners, we have to change the conversation from that conversation you saw in the newsletter to uh, what it, the, the definition of participation, as many people have said here, talking about the old funky co-op, was you show up and you unload the truck, you work, um, you get your discount, that's how you participate. You wash the rags of the co-op, um, all kinds of things. That's how you participate. But there were maybe 25 people at the point that I came in that were really participating, and maybe another 75 transient people participating at that point. The idea that the changes in the co-op would allow so many more people to participate on so many different, different levels was a very difficult message. And I, I think we took advantage of the fact that we were so small and I can't say we did a very good, effective education campaign. We ripped the Band-Aid off and moved to patronage and uh, then had to demonstrate how people could participate. No one is listening to us when we talk about it. it, it we really had to, to, we couldn't, I found that we couldn't just change it, the conversation in terms of telling people. We had to keep investing in the store and show people. And the response has been tremendous. And people like Jackie Arthur said things to me. And one of the most valuable quotes I have ever heard through this process, so I'll share it with y'all, is, and I don't even know who said it, uh, was change feels like failure when you're in the middle of it. So I'm sure somebody out there knows who said that. And, and I, I, that, was, that was a bit of a mantra for us. And I've got to tell you, it, is, it has made a tremendous difference. We, we, now have, yeah, we now have 480 members, which I realize is a very small number for most of y'all, but we were like at 70 <laughs> for 20 years. And uh, we have 25,000 in investment in our store, which is a first ever and that people would give us money. <laughs> and uh, we are currently, last year was terrifying. Last year when we made the changes, the sales plummeted. And it, was, it, was, it felt like failure. This year our sales are 32% over last year because we've had a chance to realize the changes. And it took a lot of guts to do a lot of this. Um, people didn't like us very much. And it's the participation of, of all of the people in the co greater co-op community that made it possible. And so if, if anyone ever talks about whether or not it's worth it to, to do the CDS program, that was really our moment of, of change. And um, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, it was really a watershed experience. And every time you show up to this and just sit through it, you have no idea how that's affecting the people around you. But it's affected us tremendously. So thank you. Thank you.